Hey guys, so day two of the N8N and Bright Data Hackathon. Basically, I'm going to be working on another project today. I'm going to be showing you how you can, for example, optimize all of your Shopify or WordPress products or whatever it might be. And I'm going to show you the entire process. Before we jump into that, just quickly, there'll be a link in the description to this Dev2. Join the hackathon, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it just gives us all a bit more chance to work with N8N, etc. So I'm going to be using Claude Code again to create um, a slightly different version of what um, they basically have on their templates. But in order to get to their templates, you just want to look inside this Dev2. You want to look for the Verify Node button here. And then this brings you to NA10's integration. I have a locally running version of NA10. You can watch the video yesterday if you want some help setting that up. And yeah, we're just going to dive into this. So there's this one here from Tomax, e-commerce product fine tuning with Bright Data and OpenAI. And you can press use for free and then you can press copy clipboard to JSON. And I'm going to show you how you can basically make a slightly different version of what is available here. So if I just go to my NA10 and just say new workflow here and then paste this, you'll see this is what it actually is. Now, the only issue I have with this is scrape by URL. Like obviously that's not a very good system having to manually put URLs here. So instead we're going to build a system where we change this with something a little bit more refined. However, if I had to do that myself, it would probably take me an hour or two. So I'm going to actually see if I can get Claude code to do it. So Claude, N-A-N, uh, W-S-L-D dash D Ubuntu, and then Claude, uh, CD, what was it? Claude, N-A-N, and then we write Claude. So what I'm showing you how to build is like a very, very simple version of one of the features of SEO Grow. Yeah, I'm going to show you like a very basic version of SEO Grove. You can go to seogrove.ai, join the waitlist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, I'm going to basically make the product SEO engine using Bright Data and N8N. I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. Okay, so I'm just going to say to Claude Code, I have a local version of N8N running on um, Docker. Can you find it, etc.? So it it's found it there. N8N found it. Blah blah blah. Okay, it's expect it's inspectable here, etc. Local files. So I'm assuming that I can just get it to edit the JSON as needed. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this JSON. I'm going to say I want to change how we get URLs um, in the system. I want to feed a website URL. Uh, let's just say sitemap website sitemap URL to the system um, and then based off the keyword that is also fed to the system which should be csv and should loop and ai should choose relevant oh no sorry this is actually not what we're building a uh, website or into the system and then um it should find all of the products using an AI selector. Uh, let's start with 10 at a time. 10 should be scraped for their titles, descriptions, um, and then an AI should output a new title, description, and tags. The tags will become product categories later. The output should be in JSON. Use um, Anthropic Sonic 4. Okay, so let's see how this does. I'm kind of curious to see if this is even a thing. Okay, so this is kind of what I want to show in this video. I'm going to copy this JSON. Now, I'm not. I'm not sure if this will just work straight out of the box. Obviously, um, but should you be able to copy this? Oh, ignore that. I was just listening to that tune. And then let's go plus workflow. And paste. That didn't work. I had a feeling it wouldn't work. Let's just say yes here. So would this put this inside my workflows then? Oh shit. Okay. Very interesting. So yeah, obviously this is pretty experimental. I don't know how many people have even made this connection yet that you can even do this. Um, but I guess we'll try and fill this in. So manual trigger is fine. Sitemap URL input. Um, 
Okay. Okay, so there it is. There's the output there. Okay. Fetch sitemap. Get JSON sitemap. Wait, does that just work? No. Let's give it a name. So there's the sitemap URL. Let's execute that. There we go. Bang. Okay, so already I need another step here. Um. Okay, maybe not though. Yeah, no, it probably does. Let's see if that works. Holy shit. Guys, this this just built this for me instantly. This is actually pretty game changing, to be honest with you. So there needs to be this is fine, but I need to slightly change this. Um I'll need to change this um what's it called? This prompt in a second. Wait, you can't use our oh, expression. Um Board model names. I need the. I'll just get sort this one. Okay, there we go. Okay, but where is the prompt? Currently, no item exists. Select the base language. No href lang tag products sitemap. See if that works. So these are all of the sitemap URLs, and there's a prompt here. Okay, so that should actually be working. So this should just select the base language sitemap. Only respond with one link, which should be the index product sitemap without uh, href lang tags. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's here. So now we have, this is the output here. Perfect. So now what we would have to do, we would have to pass them. Okay. So we've passed that response. So we've got the URLs here, right? And then if you just open this, this will be just the product sitemap for this website, right? Perfect. Good. Now we have to actually scrape that, uh, that thing individually. So we'll have to fetch most likely this. So we have to fetch that link. So let's copy this and put it here, right? Assumes correct. Again, I'm not an NAN expert, by the way, guys. So, yeah, no. So I just had to slightly change this passcode here. I used ChatGPT. I said instead of doing this, just make it strip it down just to the URL. And then if I execute that step, you can see I've just got the URL here. And then if I fetch that URL, if I execute this, you'll see these are now all of the products. So now what we have to do is we have to pass um, those. We have to pass the first 10 ones before we feed it to bright data. So we'll just do that now. So we'll pass this, um, get the original code, I guess, from ChatGPT. Like that. Oops. Oh, wait. Uh, where can I get that? Okay, and then bang, with a little uh, help from my friend ChatGPT, I basically extracted all of the product links you can see here. There's 239. Um, I just had to play a little bit around with uh, GPT-5. I just kind of said, I'm trying to do this, that, the other. And yeah, I finally got there. This is really, really cool. This um, pass selected URLs is actually really, really good. Um, it makes this it makes NAN a lot better. I didn't actually know it existed. That's why I like to use templates when I'm doing stuff like this, because you learn a lot about how to do things. So now we have to scrape the URLs, right? This should be a fairly simple step. I do kind of, I don't really want to do all of these. Um, I'm just going to say, make sure it's limited to five, let's say. Okay, so now we've got five, that's perfect. That's uh, what we need. So we should just be able to execute this, I believe. Let's have a look. It said does not exist. Oh, right, that's why. Um, so let me just play around with this for a second. URL should be that just as URL1. Oh, okay, URLs like that. Let's see if that works. Okay, so apparently it needs to be a string. So again, just changing up the uh, JavaScript. I believe it's JavaScript. I think it looks like Python, actually. Oh, no, it's JavaScript, yeah. Um, changing up a little bit because Bright Data requires it to be a string. So let's see if that works. 
Um, okay, I'm going to make a slight change here. I'm going to use an AI product selector like this one here. Um, we're going to connect it to this because then it's pretty much the same as that one. Okay, so let's grab the data here. I'm just saying select 10 products. Should just execute straight away and execute. <clears throat> Shouldn't be anything funny going on here. Should be very, very simple. Okay, there we go. So now we've got 10 products. And then that needs to go into a parser. So we'll just get the simple parser. Connect it here. So let's just execute that. See if it works. There we go. Now we've got 10 URLs. And then that needs to be fed over here. Getting a little bit complicated now, but it's all good. Now, does this work? Okay, so I just asked Claude Code how I can actually do this, and it looks like it's actually just smashed it there. Um, yeah, 10 items, perfect. So yeah, I tried ChatGPT for ages, it wasn't working. I just hopped on over to Claude Code. I did Control A, Control C, and then Control V, right? So let me just show you that. So you can actually, because obviously this has changed since it gave it back to me, right? So I can do Control A, Control C, and then paste it into Claude Code. And then if you look, you press enter, it's actually just got the same thing. So this is kind of really, really overpowered in terms of like making workflows do exactly what you want them to do. I wouldn't even bother trying to do things myself anymore, honestly. I'm going to keep building with this, guys. I'm just going to finish this off because I want to show you guys what this is actually capable of. So you can see here now we've got the information we need. We've got, um, yeah, the, the individual product files, right? one by one. So we're on, let's say table, for example, bad example. Okay, so let's see what this is. Process products for AI. Let's press execute. Let's see. Okay, so I wouldn't actually bother with this here. Instead, I would use this and I would say, um, add prompt, I'm gonna say user. Let's do define below as well. Actually, let's get rid of this. So let's do define below and say, um, wait, show data. That's going to lag out. So this is output into JSON, right? Um, I'm going to say extract the meta title, meta description, title, description, um, and anything else you can find that actually, we don't need that. We could get the images, but there's no point and output them as a JSON array with those objects, right? And then we can't execute the step because we have to add this. Where is that before? So we'll add the model here. There we go. Just delete. Okay, and then this should execute. Okay, so the request is actually too long for Claude. Um, is it just me or a, a, where is their thing with 1 million contacts? What the fuck? Oh, okay, I won't be able to use this. I need to put a custom thing. So I'll use ChatGPT instead. So we'll use OpenAI. I think GPT 4.1 Mini, if I'm not mistaken, has a large enough um, context window for this. So we'll save that. There we go. This should just work now. Execute. So this should have a good enough uh, context window to actually do this. I believe it's 1 million, if I'm not mistaken, with GPT 4.1 mini. I do like these models for that reason. It's a super, super helpful thing. As soon as Sonnet has this fully available to us, it's going to be absolutely crazy. But Okay, so we see here we have meta title, kids on blue, Vicuna, overcoat, two men, meta description, title, description, right? Very, very good. Perfect. So we can go back to canvas here and then you can kind of do whatever you want with this. You can optimize it. I'm probably not going to go through that part of it. I just thought that I'd go through like the kind of essential building parts to this. Now I'll leave the JSON for this somewhere, probably on GitHub or, or whatever. I'll just control A, control C it. Might have to remove my API keys and stuff first, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'll push this through a GitHub that you'll be able to find in the description if you want to play around with this specific template. 
One thing to note is if you don't have a sitemap index, you'll have to change this part here. Um, but yeah, I'm not really one to add sticky notes and things. I'm not, yeah, I'm just, they, they, I've shown you what to do. You can use this if you want, or just kind of use the system that I've shown you using Claude code, etc., to build and also bright data as well. Thanks for watching guys. I'll leave the video there. I'm actually, I'm actually really enjoying building with NA10 and bright data. I think it's super, super interesting. And yeah, you can kind of, from here, it's super, super simple, right? You just need to, I'm not sure if that worked because it's something else, but um, yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content and peace out.